folks, Marty Nowicki from Impact Snap. Coming to you with Adam Bazalgett, my old friend. We're here at the Golf Club of Mediterra. Adam, uh, you probably have seen him from scratchgolfacademy.com. Great to be with you and spend some time with you. transfer energy to the club. Most people yeah. drag the club so much through the ball it just doesn't really snap for the yeah. use of the term. And I think the ability to square the face up. Most people slice the ball so they, they don't always know what it feels like to square the face. Actually a lot of times when people will slice a ball I'll ask them and say you know, what do you think caused the ball to go so far to the right? It's pretty rare that someone says to me I think the club was this or that. It's always I didn't turn it up or I was too quick or I wasn't watching the ball enough. Yeah, but that's not what the ball reacts to. The ball reacts to that. The club face. The it, club face. And I've started telling people, look, the ball is going exactly where it's supposed to be exactly going. Exactly it's told to do. <laughs> and I guess training the wrist, arms, hands to square a club face and get a good impact. Because I'll tell you, if you have a chronic inability to square the club, could be left or right, typically it's open or right for the right in the open. Your subconscious will invent all sorts of things, ingeniously, Absolutely. bad things, but things you have to have to play golf under those conditions. So sometimes it's difficult to fix your plane and your body motion, so you have some sense the ball's coming off the club reasonably true. And it's a lot more fun to hit it squarely, the ball comes off with a lot more energy as well. You get a glancing hit, it doesn't only cost you direction, it costs you distance-wise. You don't compress the balls. And I'll say, look, that isn't closing the club, that is closing the Correct. club. See? It's got to face down more. Now, certainly if your hips and hands are forward, that squares into the line. So they're getting a feel in their hands of what square or more closed is. Yes. It's surprising. To people. It, and people don't need to use their whole body oh, exactly. to try and square up face. The, face. Yeah, exactly. and the inability to do that causes them to use their whole body. Agreed. Yeah, exactly. Or it encourages it. What are you using an impact bag for? How are you using it to help your students? There's a couple of ways I like to use it. You probably have seen these things. What I don't recommend is what most people do with it is they just body slam into this thing and the whole thing billows like that. You feel, A, you could hurt yourself doing that. B, I don't think that does you much good. I think the idea is to feel where things are at impact so that you can, this is the whole idea, it stops you at impact. And one of the things is club face. A lot of times, particularly with the driver, I'll get someone back here and say, okay, pretend the ball's six inches behind that, but when you drive at the back, to learn something new, I want you to feel like the driver is looking this way at impact. Invariably, the first few, it's there, but they start to get a feel for how to do that, and if they're a slicer, it's a lot more face rotation than they used to. That would be one piece of it. One of the drills I like, we shuffle this back so you can see that. You can see the top of the back. I like people to push against the back, keeping their hand here. They start to feel their glutes and abs and some sort of instinctive support for the club, and then from there make a little swing and return to there without tons of speed. Start to feel something different there. Uh, you know, we both spent time with a lot of great instructors. I've seen Mike Bender use it where he wants you to go past the bag. Uh, so go ahead, go ahead and hit the bag for me for a second. We'll leave the club in there. So what folks need to understand, there's resistance here. There's not resistance here, so that the hands can keep moving forward. And what what Mike likes to do is get the club going more outward okay. yeah. and close it, yeah. and close it, keeping the arm more out of the ball. So generally speaking, you are going to reach the bottom of the low point of your swing when the shaft gets to vertical. Okay, this is pre-low point. This is post-low point. So if we've got these balls in a row, let me slightly angle these a little more towards the camera. If this is the ball. As long as I can get the handle beyond the golf ball before the club fully straightens out, I'm pretty much going to get the low point beyond the ball. Now, doing that, sure. And with you know, I, I tell people that you know our audience shoots say 90 on average, okay. which means that they tee it up 18 times between 72 other times they're playing the ball on the left. Right. Okay, which, and if we say half of those are putts, that means the other half they got to really pay attention to where the low point is. Absolutely. So more than half of all their right. shots. Uh, so basically, take take us through a drill maybe to 
help someone move their goal well. I think it's really important to note that the great players in goal, they're not taking the entire club and smashing it towards the ground. They don't do that. The club goes pretty level, let's say the handle, pretty level along the ground, and in fact, at the beginning, it slightly rises. So we're not trying to get way down. Having shark lean alone, if the shark is leaning forward when it gets to the ball, it will pretty much have sufficient downward hit, a fraction. So again, we're not trying to whack down, we're trying to get the handle across the ball. One drill for sure, line a few balls up so you've got a reference as to where your imaginary ball would be. Let your weight glide towards the target, let the club react a little bit like the towel, and just move past this imaginary line and brush the carpet or whatever, but surface is well past the ball. Sure. I think it's a mental barrier for a lot of people. You know, yeah. if, you said to, if you said to me, hey, that's the edge of a five-story building, you're on the roof. Yeah. You were perfectly safe standing there. There's no way I'm standing there, because it doesn't. It's, you feel like you're going to die. I'm telling you, people get so fixated on that golf ball, they're so deep down in their subconscious trying to hit at the thing, they don't allow themselves to move enough to the left with the handle and the hips, I don't think. To get them tough, as evidenced by 99% of their errors are on that side of the ball, zero to one percent on that side. Sure. Like it's not safe. And just basically some simple pitch shots just to get Absolutely. people yeah. understanding they give it out yeah, the ball. Exactly. And then I actually like to show people if you hold your finish afterwards and you have some yeah. some good wrist conditions, exactly. then you can then look down and say, hey, look at that, I did it. Right. I don't, you know, they're not twisting, bending, turning, yeah. all that. Your club's stuck up against your body and your arms are turning too much, you probably haven't done it right. So like you say, best to do it on a small scale without the ball first. Hit your few balls along there. Remember, you're trying to hit the ball lower, not higher when you do this. So get a nine on it. Some little low shots might be helpful. For Impact Snap, I'm Marty Nowicki. Please hit the subscribe button down below. Click the bell notification. That way you get notified each time we put out content. Leave your comments down below. That helps us to create more content for you.